I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on equilibrium. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products, as well as the author of the Death Destroyer book. I'm going to go over a really solid problem and a short bed question to land on the deck on chemical equilibrium. So far, I've done two dad exams for you. I've done general chemistry and I've done organic chemistry from the 2007. I'll be doing the other video clip on the 2009 shortly. Okay, come on in and let's have a look. What I have here is an equilibrium system where we're going to take <clears throat> phosphorus trichloride reacted with chlorine and we're going to get phosphorus pentachloride. Now, this is an addition reaction, and as you can see, it's in equilibrium, and it says here that the potential energy of the products are higher than that of the reactants. We have a sealed container, and what I want to do is, how can we increase the moles of PCL5? Now, the first thing we're going to do is, what does it mean when it says the products are at a higher level potential energy-wise? Well, if you remembered, we have potential energy on the y-axis, and this is the reaction progress, and the graph would look like this, where these are the reactants, and these are the products. Notice the product is higher. So that just tells me that this reaction is endothermic. Now, the first thing to do equilibrium problems is to set yourself up. Let's draw the equation again. So we draw the PCL3, plus chlorine to get PCL5, and it's endothermic. So what I do if it's endothermic, I put the heat on the left side. The left side simply means that heat is being added, and that's what endothermic means. Now, let's do some tricks. The first thing I do is, as I explained in the Dat Destroyer book, I go to the side with the heat, and I draw this little man at the side of the heat. If you remember in the Destroyer book, we give him a name. How would you like if you had no name? We call this little Homer. Now, we draw a little Homer wherever the heat is. Now, we add up the total moles of gas. Now, if you remembered, PV equals NRT. Moles is proportional to volume. So instead of saying there's two moles of gas on the left side, I'm going to say there are two volumes of gas on the left, and there's one volume of gas on the right. Okay, the first thing I can do, we want to move the equilibrium to the right. So what I can do is to use Le Chatelier's principle. I can increase the amount of PCL3, or I can increase the amount <clears throat> of chlorine. So by doing that, you're putting a stress on this side, it wants to undo the stress, and therefore, it would move to the right side to get more moles of PCL5. Now, how about the heat? The rule is, if you increase the temperature, this little man runs away and he gets burnt. So what's going to happen if you increase the temperature? He runs to the right. If you decrease the temperature, he would stay put, like he's frozen solid. The rule I teach my kids is wherever this little man ends up, is the side the equilibrium shifts to. So clearly, if you increase the heat, the little man runs away, and therefore you would make more product on the right side. So I'm gonna say you increase the temperature. Another thing I can do is I wanna move the system towards lower volume. So I can simply say decrease the volume of the container. Another way to say decreasing the volume of the container is simply what? Increasing the pressure on the system. So I can increase pressure, decrease volume of the container, increase temperature, and increase any of the reactants. And all of these will be ways that I could move this equilibrium to the right side and maximize my product. All right, let's do one more that I have for you. What I have here is 2SO2 plus O2 gives 2SO3. And what I want to do is how can we increase the product yield? So once again, we look at the delta H. This time it's negative, which means it's exothermic. 
So what does that mean? That means heat is given off. I write heat. And once again, I draw my little Homer friend. I never do a problem without little Homer. All right. How do we maximize product? One, we can use Le Chatelier's principle. I can increase SO2. I can increase oxygen. Or I can decrease the SO3. If I decrease the SO3, more would come over to replenish it. <clears throat> okay. Next, we have two volumes and one. That gives me three volumes of gas on the left and two volumes of gas on the right. So I want to go to lower volume so I can say decrease. Actually, let me, let's do the little trick with Homer first. Okay, now that we got little Homer, if we increase the temperature, he would run to the left. I don't want him to run to the left. So I want to keep him on the right side. So I would work cold. I would decrease the temperature. All right. Back to here, we have three volumes and two volumes. You want to go to the lower volume. So I'm going to write, you decrease the volume of the container. And when you decrease the volume of the container, that's another way to say increase the pressure of the system. So you got all these ways. <clears throat> Part B, which is a sure bet question. What would increase the value of the KEQ? The only thing that changes the value of the KEQ is temperature. Now, if we increase the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to the left. Because remember, the little trick I said to use is you heat it up and the little man runs away. Well, I don't want it to go to the left. So what would I do to, to increase the value of the KEQ? I would decrease the temperature of the system. Okay, I hope this helps on a sure bet question on chemical equilibrium. You'll see some more challenging questions in the Death Destroyer book. All right, good day to you and study hard. See you in study group. Bye-bye.